Hi and welcome to OTR Miniatures. In this video we're getting Christmassy with the Red Gobbo and Bouncer. Before we get started with the Red Gobbo, just a quick announcement. There'll be a free giveaway at the end of this video so stick around and find out how to enter. I've picked up the festive guide from the Warhammer store because there's some activities in here that if we complete with the Red Gobbo, then we can get a free ball ball, and I'm all about free stuff. So as we can see from this page, there's five steps to getting the free display ball ball. Step one, collect. We've already completed as we bought the Red Gobbo and Bouncer. So step two, assemble or build. Let's get to it. And now that that's assembled, let's see what the next part is. So according to the festive guide, now we've finished the build part onto the painting. Let's get this base coated. So the festive guide has a paint guide for the Red Gobbo and Bouncer already in it. So you can follow that. And it says to start with a undercoat of Corax white but I've started with a Xenophil Prime on mine using Chaos Black Mechanica Standard Grey and Corax white and then I'm also going to undercoat the squig using Wraithbone because November's mini of the month was this squig which I used as a test model and that's what I did for this one. So I'm going to paint it the same as this. And then once I've done that, then I'll follow the rest of the steps the same as in here. And I'll let you know if I do anything else slightly different, just in case you want to do the same. The painting guide uses 10 different paints, which is really good to speed paint it, but only if you actually have them paints already. So the next difference in my painting of it is that for the green they would use orc flesh i haven't got it so i'm going to use a base of auric flesh for the orc itself and then i'll go over that with contrast warp lightning that should just give it a really nice quick skin tone and you end up with something that looks like that which i think is a very effective quick way of doing the gobbo's flesh and then i also just on the bits of the tree there did just the warp lightning and then I'm gonna go over that now with built tan green just to darken that down and add a little bit more contrast to it so the next step according to the paint guide is the red and again I'm going to be doing it slightly different because they are doing a base of Mephiston red whereas I'm going to go straight for contrast I'm going to use blood angels red and as I said earlier, it's because I did this test squig and I really liked how that turned out by doing this Wraithbone with then the Blood Angels red over the top. And also I speed painted this Hobbit a while ago and I like how that jacket turned out, which is the reason I did the Xenophil Prime to begin with. So that we can end up with the jacket looking something like this. If you use the same method then you should end up with something looking like this and you can see that the two reds are just different enough that they really stand out so that's zenith all primed and then just wraithbone on that one so the shading on the jacket and everything is already done for us so we don't have to worry about doing any more to that we're just going for tabletop ready standard for this one so the next step is to do the black which you'd be using a bad and black for 
which I do have, but I'm not going to use. I'm going to carry on with the contrast paints and just use Black Templar. Actually, scratch that. The next step I'm going to do is the, his little trousers. I'm just going to use Saigor Brown. So it'd be very subtly different to the black of the boots next to it. I also did the branches. So this bit along here, a little bit in his mouth. And then the tree at the back and the root just down there with the side brown. So it's coming together nicely now. Next up is to paint the baubles with a silver. And they use iron hand steel, which I don't have. So I'm going to use this old mithril silver. So this, this is just to base coat the baubles so that when you paint over them, they still look me metallic and nice and bright. So mithril silver will help with the brightness of them. And for the metal bit where the antlers go onto on the squig, I'm going to use lead belcher. After basing all the metal parts, the next stage would be to paint the teeth, antlers, string and branches with Zandri dust, which I don't have. The closest colour I've got is Morgas, Morgas bone, so I'll be using that. And also, I'm not going to do the teeth like that. I'm going to do them the same as I did on my squig, the test one, which was just to have the base coat of the wraith bone and then use the skeleton horde contrast paint over the top. So I'm also going to do the gums the same as I did on this one, which is, again, the base coat of wraith bone and then just contrast of magos purple over the top of that and now we're looking like this so we are very nearly done now i've just got some more details that i gave myself that weren't in the painting guide in that they just went over all of these um light cables just with black the same as what I've done as a branch going in between it so I'll have to paint that but next up is to go over the bits that I've just painted in more gas bone with basilicanum grey so let's see what that does to it this is how it's looking now I used Caliban green for the wire on the lights and up here for the smoke on the TNT I started off with Iandon yellow just for the bit that would be sparking and then that was also done with the Basilicanum grey as was the antlers the wrapping and any other little bits that were such as the gun and the metal just holding on the antlers there. So the next step is to do the baubles. So I'm going to go over some of them or some, two of them with the warp lightning and then two of them with the blood angels red. There was more baubles than I thought. There was actually seven. So I did three in green and four in red. I also did the grenades, just one on the base there and one in his pocket with the warp lightning as well. And then I gave it a coat of the, however you say this, Coelia green shade, let that dry and then gave it another coat of Biltan green just so there's a nice subtle difference between the baubles and the grenades, but they still look like grenades and metallic. So the next step would be to go over the red coat and the squig flesh, which I'm not going to do because, as I explained earlier, I already got the finish on both of them that I want. So I can skip that. So 
the next step would be to do the star and I'm also going to do the eyes of the squig with eander and yellow and this is the result after that according to the painting guide this would be done but I've got another couple of steps that I'm going to do so I'm going to go over all of the white with apothecary white just to add some more contrast in that and bring out some of the shadows and then for the lights and the goggles I'm going to use athematic blue just to add another colour into it just so you've got a slightly contrasting colour I also added a little black dot just to the squigs eye there so with that that is all the painting done for now as soon as I get better at freehanding I'll come back and I'll do some work on the ribbons and then just on the dynamite there as well so now on to the last step which is the basing and for that we're going to be using Valhalla and Blizzard and with that it is done so now we can check the list and see what comes next now that we've finished painting the red gobbo next up is to tweet a picture of it so let's get that done and with that we have now completed step three on to step four which is to choose one of the exclusive mini games within this guide so let's play with the freshly painted red gobbo there's two games to choose from in this guide there's either on the run or the great squig race which i would actually love to do and make a really cool Christmassy looking track but unfortunately I've only got one of the red gobbos so I'm going to be doing on the run so let's get a little game board set up and start playing I've got the gaming area all set up now I'm using a two foot by two foot board and some scenery from Mortal Realms magazines and also from the Mines of Moria I've got the red gobbo set up in the middle and a timer set for 20 minutes because this game is timed. The idea of it is that the Red Gobbo has stolen some presents and the chasers are trying to get the presents back and help save Christmas for Santa. Santa? Did someone say Santa? Oh my god! It's Santa Claus! Hey Thomas. Hello. Welcome to the party pal. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to you all. Right. It's all a good game. It's all a good game. Merry Christmas, sir. Right, so Thomas has decided to be the chaser, and for that we're using the Hobbit that I speed painted. I showed you earlier while I was painting the Red Gobbo. So before we begin, you set your Hobbit up anywhere on the board that is out of sight of the Red Gobbo. Right there. <laughs> Probably not. Oh, also, yeah. since Thomas has arrived, we've also got these... Um, changes on the board these are christmas decorations which thomas actually um, sells through his etsy store i'll put the link in the description i painted the face and that on the snowman so all handmade might i add right hide him somewhere can he climb um let's keep it simple and not do any climbing in this game. okay mm. He's going to be behind Snowman. Cool. Right, we've got a 20 minute timer. So if you want to press start on that, but be careful because this isn't even all glued together properly. Right, so be to begin with, the youngest player, which is you, rolls one dice for a random event. You've got one. one. Perfect. So the red Great gobbo start. lets off a flash cracker, stunning all who took who look upon it. So you can't move this time. Um, and I start off with ten gifts. Uh, according to the move chart, I can move four inches since I'm weighed down. Apparently, we need some Christmas music on. I think we do. We need some atmosphere. What about a fire, crackling fire? Well, just for sound. Or do you want some? Christmas carols. It'll have to be Christmas carols because they're royalty free. Crackling fire. Um, 
Is there a Christmas scenes thing on there with a the crackling fire? I just say it there. Oh, Alexa, play crackling fire. Play crackling fire, sounds of nature, by relaxing sounds of nature on Amazon Music. Do you even hear that? Alexa, volume 10. Now we're cracking the See, she knows us. She knows us too well. Right, next turn. My turn to roll for a random event then. I'm in a bit hot now. That fire. That fire. It's heating up. That is a five. So eager to catch the little thief, the chasers, chasers move with our natural speed. Roll two dice and pick the highest when a chaser runs. So first you move. And you can How move far do I move? Four inches. So try and get it so you're in a straight line so you can see it. Four. And then you can run. So roll two dice and then you can run that number. It doesn't say whether you have to be in range to run. Four. Four. So you can run four inches. Again? You'll remember you're trying to... Catch I'm him. trying to catch him? Yeah. I thought you were trying to catch me. No, you're trying to catch me to get the presents back that I've stolen. Not good briefing from my brother there. It was clear in my head. <laughs> right, your turn to roll a random event. One? Yep, that's one. Oh, a high six. fly this time. Furious at being six. robbed, the chasers move with superhuman speed, so you can move six inches this time. So let me just move first. Do I move first? Um, no, you move first, sorry. Yep. That was just six inches. Just because you missed your first time, wasn't it, that I moved first? And then you can Shit. you can run as well, so you can roll a dice and then run. So were you like three inches away? You need to roll at least a three. So I'm um, attacking the thing here. You're meant to be the good um, guy here. What am I doing? Rolling a I... dice to run. Just One dice. Run. That's how far you can run. So One inch. An inch. So you still can't get me. My turn to move. I've still hmm. got ten presents, so four inches. So you're pretty close now, so you can. Right, random event. My turn to roll for random event. It is. That's a six. So, same again. You can move six inches. So, you can go straight in base contact with me because I'm only five inches away from you. Alright, so now you need, you need to try and get one of the presents back so roll a dice and if you get higher than a three then you grab one of the gifts nope nope so i've still got 10 so your turn to roll for a random event three got three this time Does that which count? is with the red gob i spotted the chasers make haste chasers move five inches this turn so what happens because it didn't say about moving away did it Do you think it's like in um, other ones where you just, if you're unsuccessful, you just move back an inch? Then I does it not say? It doesn't say. Let's just play that so you're not just staying in base contact. Right, your turn to move. Um, I mean, roll again, yeah. No, just move. You're only an inch away, so you can come in base contact, and then roll to grab a gift. So higher than a three, you need. Let's try it again. Yep. Nope. Two again, mate. No? I mean, that one was a one if you counted that, so it's better than. Okay, that's um, I've just forgotten already. Whose turn is it to roll for a random event? Yours. Yep. All right, five. Eager to catch the little thief, the chasers move with our supernatural speed. Roll two dice. Pick the highest when the chaser runs. 
so your turn to move again you're only an inch away so you don't even need to run or anything just roll higher than a three. Oh, you've got a gift does it higher you said higher than a three three or higher or higher than a three on a three or higher okay. sorry yeah <clears throat> So you've got gifts, so I'm down to nine now. Where's my gift? Um, I lost I it want in the a post. gift every single time. A quality street every time that... Uh, under the tree they should be. They're not ours, we're not allowed. No, oh. I haven't got any to give you, sorry. Santa will tell us off. We'll be on the naughty list. I want to be on the naughty list, kids. Um... What happened there? You got one, didn't you? So, your turn to roll for a random. Five again, so you can roll two dice and pick the highest when you're running, but obviously you're only an inch away, so you don't need to. And then... Three or higher. Three or higher. That's definitely higher than a three. How, I do, know that how do I actually get away then? <clears throat> I suppose I'd need a um, random one, random one that... so that you don't move, and then I can move and get away. Well, is there not any that um, make you move faster? Or... No, I think there's only ones Normally. that make you move faster. There's one that makes it so that you can't move, and one that makes it so that you can't run. It's just because I'm a pro at this game. Not off by heart. Obviously. <clears throat> so I am down to eight gifts now. Which means that I could move five inches when I'm trying to get away. Whose random roll is it? Mine. Yep. Yeah. Can you roll a two? No. Can you roll a one? No. All right. Move in and try and get a gift then. No gift. So one. and get a one so that you can't move otherwise this is going to be over quickly five so you can roll two dice and pick the highest when you're running but you don't need to let's just move you back in and what am i rolling now i'm rolling uh, three or higher to get a gift you've got another gift so i'm down to seven shake it how long have we got left on the timer 11, 11 minutes. minutes we're almost halfway and you're not halfway through the gifts yet so i could still win I'm Who's random roll? Random event sweat. roll is it? Yours. <clears throat> you sure? Yeah, you really got to start remembering whose random roll it is. Should have had a token. And why have we all got the same colour dice? Because they're red for Christmas. You're on red. Three. You're green. You can move five inches this turn, which you don't even need to. So <clears throat> let's just move you in. Try and roll a three or higher. Down to six gifts. Your random event roll then. Two. You may not run this turn, but you can still move. So let's move you in. <laughs> Try and get a gift. You've got, got one. one. Down to five. Oh. That's it, you're halfway That's through. That's two in one minute. In... Should we just uh, relax and talk for a while? And, uh... <laughs> Try and slow this game down. Uh, your random event roll then. Is it? Yeah? No? Yours. Mine? Yeah. Come on one. No, that's a six. Uh, with a six, you can move six inches this turn, which you don't need to. These so, are all just benefiting me. How How is this, like... <clears throat> well, you don't, you don't want the hobbits to not have their presence, do you? No, true. I wouldn't want to see one cry. Exactly. Sam's a pretty ugly crier in this game. Right. There you go then. Down to four presents. Just need a one on this random event one. Because I could move ten inches now and you probably wouldn't be able to catch me. Good luck. Is it my roll? Random event roll? Yeah. No, it's mine. Come on. Get one. Oh, 
two, so you can't run this turn. Go on then, try and get it again. Another one down, I another one bites the dust. I think this is going to be over early. I mean, the rules are very minimalist. And I don't it, know, we're under half the time now, so... And it definitely says that you move. So, if there was multiple chasers, it would be over really quickly, wouldn't it? Yeah. I don't see how this game is at all fair. So. Well, I think it's just a quick activity, just to have fun. But there's the not character. really much movement in the game, is there? Because no. you're not moving, no, and so I can just move whatever I want. Yeah, really. it'd be good if it's if you took it in turns, <clears throat> like, or if you rolled to get priority or something like that, would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Maybe next time we play, we'll add that in ourselves. Right. My random event roll? Yours. Come on, one. Come on, one. It's probably the only time you actually wish to get a one, isn't it? Ugh. Three. You can move five inches this turn. Oh, Which, is that of course, far enough? You don't need to. Go on, try and get a gift. Oh, six. six. Down to two. I should wipe you out with a six, really. Like, a six is just. You should just win on a six every time in right. any game. Just if you roll a six, instant win, game over. <clears throat> well, at least by uh, me moving them away an inch each, each time, we're seeing a little bit more of the oh, yeah. board being used. Well, is my random event roll? Yes, get a one. I'll roll it down here. Go on then. That's not a one though. <laughs> so you can't run this time. But would you like to move? I would love to move, You'd thank you. To. Yeah. You've only got seven minutes and two more gifts to get. Oh, you got it. One more gift remaining. So Your random event. I really need the one now. Otherwise, realistically, it's all over for me, isn't it? It is. Oh, unbelievable. That's a one. You can't move. And I've only got one gift left, so I can move Ooh, a full six 12 minutes inches. To go. Six and a half minutes to go. Let's move all the way over here. It's been a while since I've been in the centre of the board. But you've told me before that you have that that counts as a, a climb, so that's like yeah, but one less, and you've just carved I went it. like that, look. Yeah. Not direct, otherwise I could go further, couldn't I? No. So you're just cheating. I'm having that move. Just because you're down to one. I'm having that move. Right. So, random event. You'll roll. Get another one. Damn it. Off the board. Roll again. Where's another one? Here's a one. If you just make that land on one. Three. So you What's can that? move five inches this time. Five inches. Yep. Can I have the thing and I'll bend around? And then if you get a really I can't even really bend it. Uh, if you get a really low run roll then you might not even catch me this time. So now roll a dice so you can run. Three inches, yes. Finally the Red Gobbo's having some luck. Right, wow. random event roll. Hanging them by the skin of the teeth. It is really, just one gift left. <clears throat> Couldn't have come at a better time. That's a two, so you may not run this turn. And I've only got one gift, so I can move 12 inches again. Let's go into the mines. I haven't got any dice. Oh, hang on. What? You couldn't run, but you could... No, you already moved, didn't you? No. Yeah, you did. You just couldn't... No, that was the last bit. I've done the run, and then you done your go, and then um, you said I couldn't run, because you rolled. But and then I didn't move. You didn't move? Oh, I need to no. go back then. Because you need to move first. No, because I've done the five inches, yeah. and then I rolled the three, so three inches, which 
got me to got here, me there. and then you rolled. I rolled, so you can run, but then oh, run. so you can move four inches. So yeah. Oh, I thought I was getting away with it then. Go on then. Get less than a three. Ah, oh, every time. I think that if you roll it off, then you should give me a gift back. Six. That's it. Got a six. You've done it. You With saved three Christmas. minutes and 46 seconds to spare, I again have won for the third time. Third. I've lost count. It's, I painted these. I set this all up. And then you just walked in last minute and went. Well, that's what you're good at, isn't it? You're good at painting. You're not good at winning. I need, I need to hire someone to win for me. I'm going to get a dice. Hire me. I'm going to get a dice. And then what I'll do is I'll paint it so that all the numbers are one. And then I'll win. Be a big cheat. Good game, sir. Well done on saving Christmas. Thank you very much. And have a happy new year. And now that we've done the play part of it, that's another step down. And one step closer to getting the free ball ball. Let's see what we've got to do for the last part. As we can see from the guide, now that we've completed the play part, all that is left for us to do is the read section. So we've got to complete the big festive quiz on page 16. Which is this. So let's do it. So it looks like the idea of this is to find your game. So each present under the tree contains enough models, scenery and rules to play straight out of the box. Pick up a game and learn how to play the same day. So obviously this is just for them to help boost their sales. But we're getting a free ball ball. So let's do it. So let's start here. Do you prefer to play long or short games? I prefer short games. Then do you prefer one quick game or a campaign series of games? I think that I would prefer campaign. So let's go down again. Do you prefer Shady Gangs or Super Soldiers? I'd say Shady Gangs. Sci-Fi or Fantasy? Uh, I actually prefer Fantasy. So that leads us down to Warcry. So according to this, Warcry would be the game for me. So GW, if you're watching, feel free to send me Warcry set out. And I'll feature it in some videos. So that's it, I've completed all the tasks now, earned the free ball ball. All that's left to do now is go and collect it. And for that I've put on this cycling inspired Christmas jumper, which is available from our merch store. I'll also link that in the description down below. Let's go get the free stuff. So I've now been to the Warhammer store, got everything stamped, and I've got my free display ball ball. So now that I've got my free gift time to give you yours so as I mentioned earlier there's going to be a giveaway and I'm going to be giving away the recruit edition to if you haven't already to help you get started in 40k just like I've been doing so all you've got to do is tell me how many different Christmas jumpers have been worn throughout this video thanks for watching see you in the next one like and subscribe and Merry Christmas